Let's talk now about some characteristics of big data. The first characteristic of big data is naturally the volume. The amount of data that companies generate today is really staggering. If you think, for example, about the New York Stock Exchange, it generates about one terabyte of data, of trade data, for every trading day. If you look, for example, at Twitter, Twitter generates tens of terabytes of data, and this data can be fed into the sentiment analysis, and based on that, we can discover what people feel about various products or events. Volume is going to be particularly important as we are having our devices that are sending data. For example, power meters are generating billions of readings every year. And imagine we can analyze this data to optimize the energy and actually foresee the demand for power. Velocity is another important characteristic. For various time-sensitive activities, for example, if we are detecting fraud, seconds can be decisive in being successful or not. The other aspect of this velocity is when we try to combine the data that we are getting in real time with the data that we have from before. Another good example is the sensor data that we are getting. For example, in modern cars, you have nearly 100 sensors, and these sensors can generate a very large volume of data arriving in a very rapid pace. Variety is another component. We said that traditionally business generate transactional data, but now with users being on the internet, users generate tremendous amount of data, images, text, videos, and we need to process all of that. And finally, one of the interesting characteristics is veracity. Can we trust the data that we have? And it is interesting in one poll of the various business leaders, they stated that about one third of them actually does not trust the data that they have in their organization. So determining if some data is truthful is very important challenge for big data. Big data workflow. It is not enough just to store and process the data that we are getting. We actually need to include this data into a bigger picture that we have in our enterprise. So the first thing that we need to do is, of course, to acquire the data. This acquisition can happen in various ways. Sometimes the data will arrive in a batch mode. For example, when we get large files that contain, let's say, sales records and similar. Sometimes the data will be coming as a stream. For example, when we have various sensors that are generating data, or if you are collecting Twitter data that is coming in real time. We need to store this data. And it is interesting that traditional databases do not provide a good answer for storing this data. So we will see later different mechanisms and approaches that have been developed to store this data. The principal idea there is that the data will not be stored on one machine only, but the data will be spread in a fault tolerant and reliable way across many machines. And that poses challenges. The next step is analytics. We will be applying various mechanisms. Sometimes these are going to be queries in a way similar to what we do in conventional systems. Sometimes we will apply data mining, sometimes machine learning, and we have a quite a bit of options how to try to figure out useful information in our data set. When we get this information, we need to present it in such a way so that somebody can act on it. Visualization is one of the key aspects there. Showing just numbers is usually not enough for most humans, so we need to have some visual, easy representation so we recognize the trends, recognize significant events, and recognize when should we act. The next thing in our workflow is the management of data. You need to figure out not only how to put this data on your systems and how to process it, but also what is the structure of this data. How are you going to integrate it with conventional systems in your organization? Who will have access to this data? How are you going to manage the users of this data? How are you going to approach security and similar? The data that we collect needs to be shared. And sharing of this data is a particular problem because we are dealing with staggering amounts of data. So you cannot just put it in an email attachment and send it to somebody. We are dealing with such volumes of data that impose a challenge. Sometimes you will find that it is optimal way to use a fast network connection. In some cases, it is surprising, but FedExing hard drive or set of hard drives with data can be actually faster. And finally, we got to the point of integration. It is extremely important for your success in big data that you always integrate 
your conventional systems with your big data systems. Conventional systems are still the cornerstone of modern business, and they have many activities that are truly best suitable for this type of systems. How do we combine the big data and traditional data processing? It's a very important subject, and you must cover the topic of integration very early in your enterprise. Talking about this whole workflow, the key thing for us is that the business needs to see a value from the big data chain. It should not be just viewed as a technical exercise. It really needs to contribute to higher revenues and some benefit of the business. And we need to execute all of that elements of the workflow in a cost-effective manner and in a reasonable amount of time. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on learn more. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.